Hi, I want to talk about a few uh, key things to do in Revit when you're trying to do some finishing work on it. I want to talk about using Revit City and then also about how to adjust your floors and change the textures of those and maybe some other painting if we get uh, time for that. Um, I'm just working on this little this house here, just kind of throwing them together and um, I want to add a bathroom here between these two bedrooms. I got a bedroom here and a bedroom here I'm working on. I want to put a bathroom in here. Now I have a f floor right now that's just concrete. Just made a big a regular standard six inch slab concrete floor. But I want to change it up so it's not all concrete. Well you can change it up individually instead of making all everything be one level. Just like here I made this entryway into uh, and nice hardwood entryway. Or here in the bathroom, I got some tile floor, kind of bright, but the tile floor over here. And to do this, a um, couple different methods, but easiest way I found to do it is I will go on and actually find the texture I want. Now, Revit has several textures you can go into if you've played around at all and seen in the um, into your um, materials over here to manage. There's just several. I mean, there's tons through here. You can go through and you can tweak these and change them up how you want to. And, um, you know, the graphics or even change the images or the coloring. Uh, just a lot of things go in there. So you can look through those and see if there's anything that you particularly like. Um, but what I like to do is I like to go online and find other images. And what I've done here is I just searched for, uh, in this case here, I did 18 inch floor tile. And now not every floor tile is going to, or every view you're going to look here, because you want a top down view of it. You know, something like this right here, uh, or you know, one of these shots. Uh, but you don't want something on an angle like that. You want a good top down view. And I found this one right here. So I view image. And then I just right clicked on it and I saved image as. And, um, I recall this one. This is, uh, I just called it FT1. Just give it a name for it. Give it a common place. I saved mine on the desktop. You can save it into wherever you're saving your work at for that. Once that's saved, that image, then go back into Revit and we're ready to make, um, our floor for this. Now, how this works is we already got the big floor made. We're going to make a new floor just to set on top of this one. So it's floating on this. And to do that, get out of this here. No floor here. We want to go up here and say floor. Now I'm going to go top view of this. Um, it's always nice to work top down on this one, either doing if you're in 3D top view or just going back to like level one and clicking on that. Um, I'm going to use my square or rectangle here. I could draw boundary lines if I want to. And I'm just going to make it in that area. So I've got that drawn up. Okay. Now, once I hit OK, my level is a little messed up here. It dropped it down here below us, and that's fine, just for the show what we're doing here. Um, but you can still see it's still concrete slab. I want to change that, so if you just click on it and edit type, and go to edit. Now, before we edit this, I don't want to change everything to this new style. So I want to duplicate this. It's always important to duplicate it. So if you change it now, it's going to affect everyone, everywhere all through the whole entire drawing. If you just want to just change this one, you want to do a duplicate. You can do as many as you want to. Think of it as a new layer. So I'm going to call this one my uh, bathroom floor. One. Okay. Now I can go into edit. And right now it still says concrete right here. If I can click on this brings up my materials browser and now you can this is where again you could choose one you've already or from the pre-made ones or you can make your own is what we're doing right now and right here this is create and duplicate I want to create a new material so here's my default new material I'm gonna go ahead and right click on that and say rename I'll call that my bathroom floor tile 18 inch or something. Okay, so there it is. 
Now, I'm going to graphics. I'm going to check my rendering appearance. And then here's where we actually do the work at. You go to appearance. Now right here it says image and there's no image selected. If you click on that, you can now go to wherever you saved that image we saved, which was mine was here. Open. And it brings it in. Now, I would always recommend double clicking on that or clicking on it one time here. And it'll open up in this view. And this shows the swatch of the picture. And you can adjust the scale of how it's being used. So I can go in here and I can say, well, I don't want this is 18 inch tile, so I'm going to make this um, actually 18 inches. So I'm going to scroll down here. My scale, I can make it 18 inches, and it'll duplicate itself here. Um, you know, if you're doing something like the flooring, I made it, when I did the hardwood, I made it like 10 foot. I made it much bigger to cover so you're not seeing the same pattern over and over again. So I adjusted that right here. Done. So I was just clicking on the image itself. Now that's done. Just hit apply. Okay. You'll see now it's been changed here. Okay. And okay. And you see here it's changed. Now I have this in view. Um, wherever, right here I've changed my um, detailing to realistic. Um, you guys usually have it up higher or lower, so it's like shaded. I like to keep it realistic so I can see a little bit better without doing so many renders um, with it. Now, one problem with this is, see how thick this is? This is still um, a 6 inch slab or 8 inch slab that we had before. And we don't need an 8 inch tile for our bathroom uh, thick. So I'm going to click on that and say edit type, edit, and then right here where it said the materials, right now it says 6 inches. I'm just going to make that 1 inch. And then I'll hit OK on that. Apply that, and now you see it's shrunk up to be much smaller. Now, last thing I do is I kind of set this up here on top of that concrete, and so I'm going to select it. I'm going to choose my level. And I have everything on level one for mine, so I'm going to choose level one. Well, level one is going to be blended in with itself, so I need to actually need to offset up just an inch above level one. So over here it says height offset. I'm going to choose one inch. So now it's going to just float just above it. Hit apply, and now we can see that's been applied to it. And if we don't like the um, the scale of it, we can always go back in there, and I can edit where I did the scale at. I can adjust that number, um, but now I've added the floor to it. Now that same process can be used throughout the entire house. Any any way you want to draw different shapes, anything you want to go through it, you can make those up. Um, now I want to bring in some components. Now AutoCAD or um, Revit does have um, some plumbing components you can get into. Um, component here, and I could choose edit type and load up. You know they have a plumbing section here, architectural fixtures. Uh, here's some bathtubs. A couple you can choose from, and some toilets and. Um, you could bring in, so say I want to bring in this toilet here. Okay. I'll load that in. Oops. Still had my fireplace for some reason. Um, let's go back here again to my component. Uh, let's find where I was using here. Toilet. There we go. Domestic toilet. My recent ones. There we go. So I can set that down where I want to. And now, before I set it down, I'm going to check my level. Right now it says it's still down here level 2. I'm going to go ahead and set that to level 1 to make sure it's on the correct floor. So I'm going to set that down. And again, I could take this and I can rotate this around if I need to. I can move it around. I can change that however I need to. But let's say there's something that I wanted to put in here that I couldn't find that they've had pre-made. And that's where I like to use Revit City. And if you've never used Revit City, it's RevitCity.com. And when you get there, it's going to ask you to log in. This is going to say, mine I'm already logged in, it's going to say log in or join. And you will want to join. And it's just 
uh, name, email address. I would suggest not using your school email address. I would use your personal email address. Cause I don't know. If, I can't remember if they send you a confirmation or not. Um, but get that once you're logged into that. Then this site has, has millions of different things you can think of. Just go to downloads, and whatever you're thinking of, you can search for it. And people have posted things here. So I'm going to go download and let that load up here and then keyword. So say I want to use a, I'm looking for a, a vanity. Let's do a bathroom vanity. And you can search from, you know, vanities to, you can search for monster trucks and you can search to fireplaces and uh, water fountains and pools and is anything to think of they have on here. Um, so we can look through here and they're saying they have uh, just pages of this and you can look through and see some ideas that you like. Um, if you find one that you do like, let's say this first one right here. So I can say download now. I can either click on it and view it or I can say download now. And it downloads it. Now to actually apply it in Auto or in Revit is I'm going to go to Insert Load Family. Now I went to my Documents Downloads Bathroom Round Vanity. I find it, open. It takes us a moment here. It runs this. Once it runs that, now I can go back to my Architecture component, and you'll see it's automatically there that it brings it into your drawing and now I can go through here and set it to where I'd like to um, now again once you set it down you can then use your uh, rotate to adjust it so I need to rotate 90 degrees and I want to go ahead and slide that on over here against my wall and there you go, you have a vanity brought in. And you know, that's what I did over here with this bathroom. I went and found a fancy vanity. I used the tub that was already in Revit, brought that in, and uh, placed those down. But always want to make sure you do the insert load family first to bring it in, and then you can use your component to. Um, actually then bring it into your drawing. Um, but Revit City is very useful to find ideas and then uh, going through and adding the textures onto um, using your different floors uh, throughout your drawing. So have fun playing around with that, finding different textures, to have, finding different things to bring into your house and just to make it your own.